Hey everyone, happy new year and welcome back to the Artist and More Experience, the show where we dive into the mindset, experiences and culture of some of the most influential artists, creators and achievers. Now, we've got a special episode for you this week and it's taken from our Creators Experience Live Hangout. Now, on this episode, we featured an incredible panel of artists, creators and business owners, including Mike Champion, Citizen K, Emmanuel Asante, Steven Zirik and Anna Zirk. Now, we dive deep into their life journey, their experiences as creators, their best practices to help you excel not only as a creator, but also as a person. And we also got some awesome questions from our live virtual audience. So, wherever you are, we just want to say we appreciate you for joining us. We want to say thank you for listening. And let's get straight into this week's episode of The Artist and More Experience with our special guest host, Henrietta and Megan. Enjoy. First guitar. And it wasn't until I got that first guitar for my 12th birthday. And I just felt like everything else around me in life just kind of dissipated. Uh, at the time, I was really into soccer, I was really into my sport. But for whatever reason, as soon as I got that guitar, like everything else just disappeared in my life. And I just can't imagine myself doing anything else but doing music. I don't know if there's any one thing that drives me or inspires me to do it it just feels like it's what I'm supposed to be doing so I just continue to follow that uh it's kind of like this blind faith that it'll take me somewhere specifically but at the moment I'm I'm just following that intuition and and seeing where it takes me at the moment so it has continued to take me for years and I hope it'll keep taking me for years to come that's awesome and it will and well you've got the passion to back it so I know it will I'm gonna throw it to Emmanuel now Okay, the reason why I do what I do, uh, it comes down to, I had a crush on this girl. She was so beautiful and I didn't know how to express it. So I had to draw her, but I hid it behind my book and there was this friend of mine, she wanted to know who I drew. So as we were struggling, the, the book just fell and then she saw her and then run away to the girl. Like, you know, uh, Mel, 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 she draw you. And I'm like, ooh. And then, anyway, long story short, I couldn't actually look at the girl. I ran away and it might see her because I was so embarrassed. So my art teacher actually advised that I have a good talent for art. I should pursue it and to take me to places. And yeah, yeah, doing my best. Thank you. <laughs> oh, we, <thank> you. Yeah. <laughs> we love an honest story. <laughs> um, and Mike, let's hear from you. Hey, everybody. Definitely, for me, it's, it's definitely that... Um, that innate kind of connection that I've always had with music. You know, I think it's just something that has always been a part of me, similar to Kojo and Citizen K. And also, similar, I want to take from Emmanuel's story as well, because I think it's also, I mean, I mean, if people know me, they know I'm a lover and I love to just speak on love and I love to like give that kind of energy to the world. So I think that innate, you know, feeling that I have towards music and I think it's it's the one thing that I connect with that allows me to give that love to the world is music. So, you know, th that's what keeps me inspired is is being able to take something that God gave me and, and you know, push that energy of love through it into the world. So I, I think that's definitely my story and my connection to what inspires me to keep doing music and keep going with music. And I mean, not just music, I guess everything artistic that I do so yeah that's it that's amazing thank you Mike and uh Stephen and Anna what inspires you guys to do what you do uh I think well nothing but we definitely feel strongly how the condition of the industry that we were as we entered into I guess opening up the studio wasn't really where we wanted it to be uh, in regards to try and cater I guess a little bit more of a personal touch to the studios. And so we tried our best to see a change in the way, I guess, the artists versus the industry kind of communicate and support each other through each other's services. Um, and we feel very strongly about how we want to see more of a collaborative and positive reinforcement to the musical community, um, where the communications between industry folk as well as the artists themselves are kind of being more we need to help each other out in order to, to succeed rather than I'm um, doing the other person a favor. So that's been a big driving force in the way we're trying to 
or you know do our best to um, do yeah do what we do yeah no that's awesome and I might stay on you guys and ask you this next question because I think that kind of segues really well um what obstacles have you encountered along your journey and how did you overcome them so you mentioned you know there's these things that you were noticing and you said hey instead of you know basically complaining about it let's do something about it so yeah it there's daily obstacles uh there's a lot when it comes to starting a business but uh a lot of them come down to time and money uh, but re-educating the industry with uh, I guess the message that we wanted we want to share and we want to try and teach and change that mentality it's hard so it takes time and to build uh, that momentum yeah to build that yeah. momentum and a lot of the times people come in and they they, they're so taken aback by the way we approach business and we approach our recordings and everything like that. Uh, but that's probably being the biggest one is the, yeah, just the re-educating, I guess, or putting through our, our message. Yeah, and how do you find that you deal with those obstacles? We're constantly adapting and pivoting. Mm -hmm. we're, yeah. Look, we're, we're not going to try and say we've had you know, a perfect run with every client you know, as much as we would love to, but uh, along the way th through the past four years, we we've, learned from our mistakes. Yeah, we learned from our mistakes, how we communicate with our, with our you know, we, it's essentially family and friends. Like, we, it's, yeah, some of them may seem a little bit like clients, but most of the time we know their story, we know where they've come from, what, you know, their hardships and everything. So, you know, dealing with the psychology relationship or the emotional relationship um, with everyone it comes with its own sort of unique things that we need to kind of create a, or I guess adapt a particular relationship with it so it can be as successful as we want it to be. Um, but yeah, I think just staying malleable, staying uh, adapting, adaptive. Learning, constantly and constantly learning. learning to yeah. keep learning. That's it. That's it. And I mean, I guess there's no one blueprint, you know, as to yeah. how to. Yeah, um, as much as we want to. <laughs> As much as that would be the best, <laughs> unfortunately, there's not. And so that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm at the room to you, Mike. I know that you've been doing this for a long time. Um, so what are some of the obstacles that you've um, encountered along your journey and have you overcome them? It's definitely, um, I think, with my genre of music in Australia, it's trying to find a way to navigate that, I guess, because it's not considered like a commercial genre of music so when it comes to like getting the support from majors major labels radio uh i think when i started doing it and even now it's still kind of the same there's not that huge like commercial support you know so and, and when you don't have that kind of support it can feel like you're like really in it yourself and you're trying to push yourself forward and find your own avenues to get it but um I think just really connecting with community, you know, and and collaborating with artists that are going through the same thing, um, but also have the drive to push it further. Having that, having a circle of artists like that, and being able to collaborate with artists like that, uh, really finds you, you. You find that kind of common ground, that sense of community that you need, definitely as an independent artist, um, to to push through and and you end up, you know, honestly achieving great feats, like collaborating with artists that might be bigger than you, or you might perceive are bigger than you, you know? And that's, artists you perceive to be bigger than you, a lot of the time it's only because of their industry recognition and because they're being recognized more than you, they're not necessarily more talented than you, you know? So it's really just putting yourself in a position to see yourself bigger than where you're at, at the time and then really like setting your goals obviously having having your goals set out on where you want to get yourself and then doing the work to to get yourself it's very achievable you know it's 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 very achievable i feel like a lot of artists that i see that are deemed below me i don't look at below me and that's why i'm always trying to push the mold and and bring you know new artists to the forefront is because I just believe that, you know, we're on the same playing field and, and we all deserve the same opportunity to be seen and be heard. And um, yeah, it's definitely for me, it's, and it's, it's, I, I, when I see, when I see younger artists, you know, I've been in the industry for a long time, when I see younger artists, 
I never, one second, I got to mute my dog. That's all good. On my third year, Emmanuel, actually, nah, he's back. <laughs> sorry, I want to continue that. Sorry, sorry, my son just came the door. But um, yeah, I just, I just, when I see younger artists and artists that are younger than me, I always, I never look at them as like I'm an older artist that can give you that, that up. I always see the potential and the talent in them. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm honestly the type of artist that's, that loves to just stay evolving, you know, and, and, and evolution is a, a huge thing to me personally as an artist, but I think it's something that a lot of artists should continue to look at is the evolution of artists. So I never look at myself as what I've achieved. I always look at myself as where I am now and where I can keep going and, and, and how I can change myself to, you know, not so, not so much sell myself out, but how, how can I evolve as a person? If I'm evolving as a person, then how can I evolve the same way in my artistry? Because I, you know, I so and I look to, I guess I look to the youth and younger people to, to um, take note, you know, of what's going on because the world's changing. And I feel like sometimes they know more than us, you know, like they know, they more, they know more than artists that have come before them. So the power is with the youth for me, a lot of the time, as much as I have knowledge and advice, you know, I'm not scared to, to also look at the youth and, and, you know, see how I can evolve myself through that as well. So it's, it's really just remaining humble, I guess, as an artist, like through the journey, but being committed to evolving is, is a kind of what has helped me to pivot through this industry, I guess. Yeah. I love that. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Um, Similar to what um, Stephen and Anna were also saying, you know, just pivoting and, you know, noticing where you can evolve and grow and not just remaining stagnant. That's awesome. Thanks, Mike. Um, Emmanuel, I'll throw to you. Um, so one of the things that kept me like going, I hope I'm not going to, yeah. Uh, one of the things that kept me going is I always remember my why. Well, one of my goals in becoming an artist is to put smile on people's faces and to also change people's mentality that being an artist, you can make a career of it, especially being a visual artist. I know at the beginning, it's very, very hard. There are times that I have to do shows on empty stomachs and I don't have, like, you have to get it early and transport and stuff. But I always remember that it wouldn't, it's just temporary, pain is temporary. There will be time that I wouldn't be suffering. There will be time that I'll be enjoying the labors that I've done. So that's one of the things that I keep going. And one of the main thing is the smiles. Like it's the expression that you get from people when they see your work is priceless. Thank you. Thanks, Emmanuel. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. And I know you've been putting smiles on lots of people's faces, my mom included. So yeah. Um, and Kojo, I'll throw to you. Yeah, same, same to Emmanuel, I think, in terms of knowing your intent. I think the obstacles will continue to come no matter what you do and no matter how much you try to fight it, there's always going to be obstacles daily. But knowing your intent and also holding yourself to a high standard, I think for me personally, putting in actual practical things to do daily and, and holding myself to that high standard every day. Um, something as simple as writing down daily goals. I mean, it's, I think it's important to have your overall goals then to break it down in a daily thing and going, here's what I have to do. Here's the steps I have to take today to get to where I want to be tomorrow. And just holding yourself to that high standard, I think, yeah, the obstacles will continue to come. And it's just what you do about it and the perspective that you decide to take about it. So hold yourself to that high standard. That's all I can really iterate. No, that's awesome. Great answer. Great answer. Thanks, Kojo. Um, and I'm going to stick with you again. <laughs> um, what is one thing that you wish you knew when you first started out and how would that have helped you? Uh, yeah, good. I was just thinking about this the other day, actually. Uh, the one thing I wish I knew was when, for me as a musician, especially as someone who started off as purely an artist, is following your intuition tooth and nail and not compromising it. Uh, sometimes it seems like when, uh, when you create the rest of the world doesn't quite get it. And so you tend to maybe switch up a little bit, um, which isn't always a bad thing, but I think when you switch up for the wrong reasons, uh, it can really slow you down compared to if you just stuck to what you were doing. So 
you know, the amount of times that I've made a song that I've been like, this is amazing, been in the studio vibe and now, and then I get too scared to show it to other people. Um, and then, you know, years later, I'll, I'll show it to someone and they'll be like, man, that's amazing. And I just kind of think if I just stuck to my intuition and uh, yeah, just remembered why I was doing what I was doing, maybe things would have, would have gotten where they got faster. Cause yeah, every time I go back to it, it's just like, that makes so much sense. Why didn't you just do that from the start? Uh, yeah, follow your intuition. That's that's what I wish I would have told myself ten years ago. Really. Yeah, and it's that it's that gut feeling that's literally like giving you the answer you need. Mm. Meanwhile, you're doing everything but the one thing that your gut feeling is telling you that you need to do. Hundred, hundred percent. So that's good. That's a word for everyone here. Follow your intuition, y'all. <laughs> um, I'm gonna throw it to Anna and Stephen. Um, what's one thing you wish you knew when you first started out, and how would it have helped you? Uh, it's kind of similar to what Kojo was saying, but it's more in, on the sense of uh, trusting yourself and believing in yourself, believing that you are worthy and that what you're doing uh, does have benefit. I think that was a huge challenge to overcome. And it's still a daily thing that I know for myself, I'm still, some days I just, I don't feel as, um, what's the word? Yeah, I don't believe in myself as much as I should and, I, and I, I struggle with that and I think that was something that when we all, I guess it's a daily thing that we... You need to, yeah. you need to remind yourself daily, yeah. um, you know, managing yourself, managing your mental space, mm. um, that what you're doing right now is, or A, is this what you like to do? You know, am I equipped to do it? Am I willing to, to have the appropriate work ethic um, to stick it out? Uh, I think just that constant checking in on yourself um, really gives you that that vision for the long haul. Yeah, I wish someone had told me that back then. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Would have saved a lot of stress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it just goes back to what Kojo was saying. Um, was it Kojo about um, holding yourself accountable as well? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, Mike, what's one thing you wish you knew when you first started out? I uh, definitely agree with Peter and Anna. Um, I think the mental thing is is really where the the work uh, needs to be done. I guess I'm like I'm a big fan of meditation and and just really centering myself, you know, and 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 staying aligned, you know, and using those tools like meditation to align myself and prayer, you know, and and trusting in God to just re um, realign my goals and keep me, you know, focused on them. And, and I guess when, I mean, you, most people that do music start out when they're young, 15, 16, 17, 18, and you're not really paying attention to those kinds of things then, you know, but um, I think if you can grasp those things when you're younger, it's really going to help to advance, not just your career in music or the arts, but also your 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 approach to life, you know, and, and being grounded in life and, and having those tools, whether it's, whether it's church, whether it's prayer, whether it's, you know, meditation, it doesn't matter what you believe in, as long as you're grounded in your belief for those things, I think um, those things are going to help you to, you know, advance your career and, and keep the belief in yourself. You know, it's really, it's really because it's really that self-belief that can get tested in this industry. You know, being in the arts, it's really that self-belief that that gets tested and that self-belief starts you to doubt it, 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 it. You start to doubt your ability, you know, and the, the longer you do it and, and, you know, the more challenges that come, you, you, you can start to doubt your ability. So if you can really do the work to, to focus on that self-belief and, and, you know, keep that as a, as a key tool that you have when being a part of the world of the arts and always remembering also that there's a community of people feeling the same way. So don't be scared to get out into the community and, and do, you know, like um, use tools like this, this exact space that we're in right now. Those, these tools, if you search for them, you'll find them. So tools like this are ample to like keeping you motivated and, and keeping you feeling supported. You know, I'm very lucky. Honestly, I've, I have a family that supported me. 
and they've supported my parents are here right now they const constantly support me you know my sister's here uh my family's always there constantly support me but i know that i know i've got friends that are artists that don't have that and those i feel like those artists i uh, i wish that I mean, I wish I knew back then, and if they're just starting out now, I wish they know that they have these platforms like this to support them. You know, so it's really just putting yourself out there and and doing the work to find your community and being a part of the community. I feel like that's what's gonna, you know, help you to stay at it. You know. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. That's <laughs> awesome. Thank you, um, Emmanuel. Um. This question is a very tough one uh, because um, how I wish 10 years ago I was brave enough to ask other girls that I had a crush on. But anyway, uh, when it comes to art itself, I don't, <laughs> I don't really, uh, I love every journey that I took. I don't regret everything that I did. Uh, even though I, I wish I knew painting earlier, but yes, I love the process of it because I learned drawing. And I started with watercolor and now I'm doing acrylic. In the future, I might do oils. So it's like a growth. The growth in the art industry is one of the things that I love the most. Thank you. Thanks, Emmanuel. Um, I'm going to, uh, Mike, you spoke a lot about community and reaching out to community and, you know, finding your people. Um, for you, how do you feel like your community has shaped you as an artist? I definitely, I think just by uh, continuing to support everything that I uh, put up, you know, and and I think for me, it's recognizing that the the community can change as well. You know, it's also like being open to change because, I, because you know, I, I feel like the people that supported me when I started out doing music, they're older now, they're probably on with on got moved on with their lives you know so it's i think it's ex accepting that the same way you're evolving and evolving yourself your community is, is evolving with you you know so i think it's that it's that constant commitment i think as an artist i always look at music as a service so i i, I just feel like it's a god-given thing and it's really something that was given to me you know, to use and, and, in and for me to use it, it's, it's my responsibility is to affect the community, give it to the community, speak on things that are happening now in the world, speak on the times, you know, really open the mind of the community through my music. That's what I use it for. So I feel like, um, when it comes to community, it's really my responsibility, you know, to, to create my community you know, and, and, and evolve my community, you know, and I just feel like whatever I'm speaking on at the time is going to reach the community that needs it at that time, you know, so I, I don't expect people to, if you followed my career when I started, I really don't hold you accountable to stay with me forever, you know, it's just like, let's keep it moving, keep evolving, if you're going to be with me, that's cool, if you're not going to, I'm just going to keep it moving anyway, you know, you know, I, I really, yeah, I don't look. I don't look for the responsibility to be with the community. I just try to uh, give it to who who needs it. You know, the community that needs it at the time. And it's it's. I guess it's forever evolving. The community is forever evolving. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Yeah, that reminds me of what Koji was saying about the fact that you know, like we're growing and we can't, you know, be ex we can't kind of cater to what other people, other people's image of us or understanding of us is as an artist. Um, so I love that, yeah. Um, Steven and Anna, what about you? How's your community shaped you? Uh, heaps, I mean, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna speak from the perspective of as business owners, we are so grateful. Like we are here today because of the community and because of the music in like music community that have supported us and that because a lot of our business comes from uh, referrals. That's 90% of our business and repeat business. So, and especially during the last two years, uh, it was because of their support that we were able to see it through and still be here today. So it's, it's left us completely always grateful for all the creatives that walk through our door and uh, allow us to, 
be a part of their music or their creative projects. We're just constantly left in awe and inspired by all of them and their stories and their journeys as well. And they kind of also saw things in us that we didn't see in ourselves. Mm. Uh, I think that's been a really big part of our growth as a studio is that we set an intention to build the studio a certain way, provide certain services. And thanks to just those two senses from every one of our yeah. clients over the past four years, we've, we've adapted we've and, you know, people will go, oh, well, you're really good at this. But sometimes the way you look yourself, obviously someone else is going to have a different perspective or a different light on you. And if you, you know, are humble enough or I guess open enough to listen to what they have to say, there's always a piece of gold in within their, you know, perspective of you. Mm-hmm. And if you, I guess, resonate with that or you, you find inspiration with what they see in you, you know, it, it provides an opportunity for you to grow in that area of yourself. Yeah. And so that's why the, the, the community has changed us in just about every way and it has created such a support network and keeps us inspired to keep going what we're doing, to keep doing what we're doing yeah. and being ourselves in the process. It's like what Mark was saying with if you listen to the community, it can shape you. And we do. We listen to all everybody that comes to our doors. If they have feedback, we we take it on board because we know that they're the voice of they're the, they're the voice of the community. They're speaking. So if we want to stay, I guess, on top of things or current or up to date, we have to be listening and uh, yeah, evolving and taking yeah. that that back on board. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. And it obviously goes to show for the fact that, you know, 90% of, you know, the people who walk through your doors are referrals. That's that's amazing. That's honestly amazing. That's what you said, right, Steve? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we we don't, we do some online marketing, but most of it is word of mouth. And yeah. Stephen's been in the industry for a good long time now. So yeah. Um, yeah. it was because of his foundations in the industry and then word of mouth and referrals that, and repeat clients uh yeah it's it's because of that yeah so I'd like to mike and i we've been performing <laughs> with each other they've in, known each other a while like in the corporate days for what 10 plus years row <laughs> something like that so, yeah like, it's you, family like, yeah thanks to artists like <laughs> mike yeah, as well exactly like they uh, like i said they're, they're the voice they're the ones that are like what mike was saying as well like if you're open to these changes of every next generation, yeah. you're going to really be aware of what's going on. And what's coming up. And what's coming up. And then mm-hmm. you can pivot your direction if you want to take it on board. But there is that constant evolution that you can decide it's not right. to be a part of it or you can be. Mm-hmm. And that'll be, I guess, the decision that you make for your path. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, Emmanuel, what about you? How's your community shaped you? Um, as for me, I would say that you have to be selective in what community that you find yourself in. Some of them might exploit you, some of them too might help you as well. Like at the beginning, I didn't know I was so innocent and I even thought every human being was a saint and I got exploited a lot. And to my dad was like, make sure to take like half percent before you start any work. So after taking this lesson, I tried to find my own community and I found the right people, like the art community, especially how wish Campbell Town Council and Black Town Council, yeah, I would have given them a shout out. So uh, art communities like Black Town Council, SSI, Mayan, all those uh, communities have done a very good job by supporting emerging artists like me. I've even promised Campbell Town Council that if I have my first child, male child, I'm going to name my first male child after Campbell Town. And they said, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> they really, really shaped me and have helped me become a good artist as I am. Thank you. Thanks, Emmanuel. Thank you. So your first born child will be Campbell Town. That was the first name? Uh, your first name will be Campbell, then African name, then Asante. So Campbell Asante. Okay, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. I love that. Baby Campbell. <laughs> that makes sense and hey that is a testament to how how grateful you are you know for that community so that's really special um and Kojo you what about you Uh, Emmanuel you bless my heart so much I love it um so I mean first of all to touch on what Emmanuel was just talking about the layers of community as well and recognizing you know I've been fortunate to have layers of support through family um through the industry then through the city that I'm in as well. I mean, I'm in Canberra at the moment. I've been really blessed, especially in Canberra, because it's such 
uh, a small music community, it also means that everyone, there isn't much space to, to, I guess, have a lot of negative energy here because there's only, even the industry as a whole, I think in Australia and globally, it's actually a pretty small industry as well when you really think about it. Word travels quickly, so, you know, doing things for the right reasons, um, just being a decent human being to start with and having people around you in a community that are looking out for you that are also holding you accountable as well. Um, like I was saying in Canberra here, we have this, this thing where everyone goes to everyone's shows. You know, if, if one person has a show on, you know that everyone's coming to it as well. And you know that when they have a show, you're all going to it as well. Um, as the artists here continue to rise, we all kind of like look at each other and every once in a while we'll kind of like meet up and see what one person's doing. We're like, okay, I see what you're doing there. And instead of it being this, um, I guess, the aggressive competitiveness, it's this inspirational idea of being competitive where, you know, for example, my younger brother's also in the industry and we meet up every couple of months and we're like, okay, I see what you're working on there. And it's this just sense of, all right, cool. I like it. I, I'm inspired by it. And you just find that when you're around the right people and you allow the right people to be around you, you only just lift yourself higher and you lift everyone else higher and they lift you higher. And it's just like this continual just thing of like love and energy and like everyone's just hyped, like just stacking on top of each other over and over again um and yeah I, I love so much that i somehow ended up where i am um you know location wise but also the people that i get to communicate with both physically and online now the, the online community can be a very vicious place but you know if, if you if you find the right people and you find the right uh right avenues and the right little lanes i think yeah it can only do it can only do you good if you find the right place and you know what your intent is once again and know what, why you're doing what you're doing I love that I love that and I think we need more of that that's that's so special that's so special um and finally what is one thing you would change about the industry you're in now I'm sure there's a few things that you can think of at the top of your head but I'm asking you to think of just one thing um yeah one thing I'm going to start with, who am I going to pick on? Emmanuel, what's one thing you would change about the industry you're in? Um, one thing that I've changed is to promote more multicultural arts in the art uh, industry, especially the bigger gallery, especially the local ones has been doing that, but I want in a national level like New South Wales Art Gallery. And recently, um, my one of my works will be there. So I hope there'll be more works like the local ones. So, you're mute. Yeah, no, I was just like, that's so cool. That's so oh, awesome. Yeah. In three weeks, so I'll send the flyers in and everyone can come to my show in the New South Wales Art Gallery. Thank you. Send it to us. Make sure you do so we can come and support you. Congratulations, Emmanuel. Honestly, so well deserved. Truly, so well deserved. Um, yes. Uh, Mike, what's one thing that you would change about the industry you're in? Uh, I think I'd just definitely change the maybe the belief that you really need big labels and stuff to be able to push you forward i think it's you know just allowing i guess independent artists just giving them the belief that it's you can honestly if you do the work you know if you if you i mean take it serious enough that you're going to put in the work to get yourself further then you can elevate yourself that much further to a place where you know that people will start paying attention to you you know and it's really i i know like for younger artists it's it's a lot about spotify and the numbers and stuff but i, I feel like not focusing on that is the way to go you know it's just focus fo really focus on the work that you're putting out because all of those things follow when you're putting out work that's worth worth that to me because these days i think a lot of artists think oh, i can buy the numbers and you know i can but you it's 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 you don't get the reward you know the, the i guess the self satisfaction the self reward from doing that kind of thing from from spending the money on the numbers it's more about really creating work that people will deem worthwhile you know and and they'll deem worthwhile enough to want to share it with others you know, and that's what's going to bring you all that kind of success as far as Spotify and the numbers go, you know, so I, I feel like, you know, the music industry is very tainted by artists 
coming into the music industry, make, making a song and then thinking like, how do I get a million streams? You know, that's, it's like, it's all they think about. And, and so for me, I think really changing, I, I just want to, you know, provide a platform or a voice that will break down the perception that Spotify numbers is all you need to make it. It's not, you know, it's, it's really, because I know artists that have a million Spotify uh, streams and have 50 people at their show. So those, those kind of numbers like don't add up to me. So I, you know, I always, I try to go back and go, okay, like how can my work be that worthwhile that I'm going to be able to get, you know, real, real fans and real believers in my work to come to my show. And, and so I think just changing that stigma of like, it's all about the numbers for me, because it, it was never like that. And now it is like that. And I feel like just if we can, you know, have a balance of like the numbers and the work, then I think we'll be in a good place. Uh, yeah, I think it's just that's that kind of like that stigma of this is what you need to make it. Because I don't know, people can't tell you what you need to make it. You need to put yourself out there honestly and openly and give people your truth. And, you know, that'll make it for you, you know, if you can trust in that. So, yeah. That's it. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Um, who I haven't I picked on yet? Stephen and Anna. <laughs> Cannot hide. What's one thing that you would love to change about the industry? Uh, it would definitely be similar to what inspires us is that we we wish that people would, it's, we've really tried to create it at the studio amongst all of our um, in-house producers and, every, and everything, but it's to that, if we work together as an industry, if we work together as artists and support one another and uh, whether, like, however that means by coming to a show or financially or whatever, services or buying, or yeah, services or collabor collaboration, we can all come together and rise together and benefit from from it together rather than having that uh mentality or that negative mentality of like I've got to I've got to achieve my goals and I don't care of who I hurt or how I do it I've just got to that once that yeah single vision that tunnel vision so looking at more that because if I benefit you you're going to bring that back and benefit us and we can both we can both aspire and rise and achieve our goals similar to what kojo was saying before which is yeah, yeah kind of instead that. feeding that positive kind of reinforcement yeah. create that positive cycle um where we inspire and support each other rather than try and cut each other's grass yeah, so tear each other down yeah and similar to like what mike was saying like that a stigma of like people going into the music industry and they they've got their own preconceived ideas of what it is to make it mm -hmm. and then they get into it and they experience it for what it really is. And if they want to be an independent artist, like Mike was saying, it, there's so much more work to it. But if you just stay focused on your plan and your meeting your goals, like the rest will just fall into place. It doesn't matter about the, the surface level stuff like Spotify hits or things like that. So that's a few things. <laughs> no, that's, that's great. And that's such great advice. Honestly, I think everything that, everyone has said on this panel is exactly why Derek is doing what he's doing like this is the advice that people need to know that so that's so important thank you um finally Kojo I'm gonna end with you what's one thing that you would love to change about your industry uh question first is this like something that I would change that is possible or something that would change if it was like a genie grant me a wish you know what blue sky thinking if a genie granted you a wish what would you change about your industry? Okay, I would take away uh, the fear of creating, um, the fear of creating what you know you should be creating, but because of everything everyone else has talked about, whether it's industry perception, numbers, it's a kind of accumulating all the answers you just had is, I think it all comes down to really fear of not believing yourself, fear of not thinking that the art you're making is worthy, fear of, you know, there's a bunch of things, just fear in general. If I could like take away that fear from people, I think the quality of art would be having would be higher and the quality and the quantity of the quality, if that makes sense. I think there's all the people that we end up looking up to in all the art forms and in just professions in general, the people that are really up there that we look up to are always seem to be the ones that just like straight away, 
But then for some reason, the rest of us think that it's safer to be in the same part instead of just going, what? Yeah, it's just it just seems so logical that the people that are, we look up to are always the ones that strayed away from the path. So it's just like taking that fear away to just being under that safety net. Um, I think that would change a lot. And I think we'd end up just being a bit more inspired if we could just, yeah, take that fear away. I love that. And I, I wish that wasn't in the impossible. Like I wish that, you know, that was something tangible that could happen, but I also don't think that that is impossible, but anyways, good. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Who knows? Who knows? (laughs) Um, yeah, awesome. Thank you so much to our panelists. Let's give them a little bit of a, you know, virtual clap, virtual clap, you know. Um, and now I want to throw out to, you know, our audience, do you have any questions or anything that, you know, you've been thinking about whilst listening to these awesome people speak? Now's your chance. Um, we'll hear from a couple of people. Um, and then, yeah, I'll throw it back to Derek. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay sorry technical problem <laughs> i would like to say first of all to all you guys thanks for allowing us to sit in on this i'm sorry we just like eavesdropping and listening to all this and it's been very interesting listening to all you guys and what you say and it's also nice to meet people that mike works with that collaborate so you know you collaborate with chris he doesn't say too much. He just does his own thing. Mike's a very, you've got to kick him sometimes to get something out of him. He's a very calm guy. You know, he, he does. That's how he, he's very, very calm. But what I always, you know, is between him and us that we've already spoke about support earlier on. And I believe that that's all we can do is try and be there to give him the best support that we can when we can and be there to be there for him because. And I, you know how the music industry is such a it's very fickle industry. It's so hard. And, and, but if you've got a complete passion, it's, you've got to have the passion to keep going because otherwise, yes, you all know what you, what you go through and all that. And I always maintain with Mike, whether something big happens or it doesn't, he's doing what he loves. And, you know, he's, he's got that passion and he's always had that passion. I'm talking about he'd be off and... And in that same vein, I want to wish all you guys the same. You know, when when you know when Mike was to go to different shows, you get you you got all different artists you're supporting there, and not a matter of competing with other, but you all need to be supporting in, in a different level if you understand what I'm what I'm trying to say. So you know, all artists, and it's very hard. So I just want to say it's really nice being on here yeah, and just listening to you guys and getting that thing and wishing you all on and up and keep going. And yes, in Australia, it's, it is it is a very, very hard industry and to break through and to get into things. But your passion alone and listening to all you guys now, I can see that you, you've all got a passion to keep going. And I want to say, wish you all the best. And thanks for having us, for being here. Everything. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Adam has a question in the chat. She says to any one of you, what keeps you going? Um, I think for me, I honestly can't imagine doing anything else. Um I'm I'm blessed to be able to do music every day by choice. And sometimes from a a business point of view, that's sometimes all the time from a business point of view, that is incredibly difficult. Um, Trying to be an artist and also running a space where I get to be part of other people's vision. Um, I think I've found that I, I kind of get more creative joy from being a part of someone else's creative vision than necessarily when it's just me on my own being, you know, in my own little creative world. Um, yeah, being being part of like a creative sphere, I think for me is definitely what keeps me going every day instead of, and also the thought of personally for me having a nine to five doing something that I don't want to be doing, that scares me so much. 
uh, and I'd rather be kind of doing anything else than just working. I've had, I've had jobs before and just the idea that you're there from a certain time to a certain time, no matter what you're doing in between those hours, it just doesn't make sense to me personally. So I'm just very grateful to be able to do um, what I get to do and, and to be part of so many, you know, so many people's lives who are also creating and to get to being, you know, spaces like this where I get to be in this new community of, of you know, other creatives and people who want to create um, in all these different mediums. So, yeah, that's what keeps me going every day is just like I can't imagine doing anything else. Um, uh, that's for me. What keeps me going is that uh, anytime I watch on TV or I listen to the radio, every creative person have a beautiful wife, a big mansion, and a flashy car. So I'm like, yes, I'm going to become a creative person so I can get a beautiful wife in a beautiful house and a flashy car so that I can show my boys that like, yes, that's one of coming. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That will be your portion in Jesus' name. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> yeah, go for it. Um, so, uh, how does it keep us going? Yeah, keeps yeah going? what keeps it going? It's um, look, I, I've been blessed in a very uh, bittersweet way. I've been a carpenter and plasterer for 14 years. You were. Were, were, sorry. And um, she, she reminds me of that. And so, going through a job where you don't love it it's anything but love mm -hmm. uh really reminds you of what is valuable to you with your time and i've had the kind of this vicious cycle for many many years where throughout you know studying and, and going past school and trying to make money you know working as a as a tradie mm -hmm. you know it, it feels very soul-sucking and then you, on the outside of those hours, you're trying to, you know, make your, your music career, you're writing your music, working with bands or whatever, gigging away. But, and I, I didn't really come from a really supportive family um, when it came to my music. It was very much shunned upon because it wasn't a stable career. It wasn't a, um, something to be, I guess, reputable when it, when it comes to, you know, financial returns on, on a career that you choose. So I had a lot of things working against me. And so it gave me that much more drive to kind of be respecting and loving of my time that I can't keep picking up these tools and justify to myself that for the dollar. So I think when you can find a passion um, that surpasses any kind of materialistic needs, whether it be money or anything like that, there's never really a, a, a threshold or a ceiling to which you can, I guess, strive to be your best version of yourself in what you love to do. And being reminded of that during those trials and tribulations um, is definitely what has kept me going. Yeah. Can I just tag on to that? It's not exactly part of the question, mm -hmm. um, but just to tag on to that, I think it's important to also say from, you know, if you're looking to do music in a, in a sense that you get to live off it, I think it's important to also just to put a little asterisk on there that you will probably have to work some sort of job and also pursue your creative endeavors on the side. I think that's just a given for most of us. And it's just that point of, of where, you know, for me, I was in hospitalities for a long time until I could go um, into doing music full time. And the, the deal I made with myself was I wasn't allowed to quit my hospitality job until I could sustain myself in music and just being realistic because I also have friends who I guess see the perception of being full time music and don't maybe haven't fully thought through the consequences of that. I guess as much as we get to do what we do every day, there are still societal things that, you know, we still have to pay bills. Unfortunately, most of us can't just like get away with not paying our water bills. So I think there is, uh, yeah, a fine line there of, of doing what you need to do to survive and doing what you love until it gets to a point where you can transition that to be fully what you love. Um, which, you know, hopefully is the goal for most creatives. But, yeah, I just think it's important to put a little asterisk there of don't just go quitting your jobs. Like, yeah, like, that could be very scary. <laughs> Thanks, Kojo. Um, and, Mike, I know you haven't answered this question yet, but what I might do is give you the last question that's from me again and end on this question. Um, and that was what was your aha moment when you knew that this was the path for you? Uh, definitely, I think, um, I mean, when I created my first album, 
I, I think there was in that process there was a lot of things that I was saying I want to achieve, you know, and, and an aha half moment for me would just be like those things being achieved without really like putting the work in to achieve them. You know, I kind of just was in the moment of creating the, and, and just in the, the, the state of creation, you know, and, and allowing creation. And, and and so like, I remember doing my first album and being like, yeah, I want to release this album in Japan. And then when I actually like landed in Japan and I had my feet on the ground, I was like, damn, I'm actually here. I don't know how I got here, you know? And you and if you if you see a lot of like great artists and you listen to them give speeches, I listen to Pharrell a lot, and just artists like that. A lot of them will they'll they'll give you uh, answers like they got to give it to God because they don't know how they got there, and they don't. I don't know how I you know I don't know how I made a hit song. It just and I, and I guess it's it it always comes. What always comes back to me is that having that trust in allowing you know, creation and and really allowing it to like a, a power and, and a, a, a something that's greater than myself, you know? So I can just, you know, I think the aha moment for me was definitely yeah, when I touched down in Japan and I was like, wow, I don't know how I got here because it's like, it's not like I made the plan to be here, but now I'm here and my album is out here and I'm doing a tour. So yeah, it was, it's diff just definitely, you know, that, um being able to trust in that innate kind of feeling that this is what i'm supposed to be doing and this is where i'm supposed to be and just really being being there in that moment and in that time to experience you know so yeah i, I mean I, I i think i constantly have those moments you know i think i have them in the studio if, when when i say like damn I, I don't know if i can write another song and then one just comes out and you're like damn you wrote another great song you know so it's it's, I think with artists like us, we, we write one song and then we're like, damn, how am I going to write a song better than that? You know, we get caught up in those states of mind. And, and if you can look beyond that and just get caught in the process of creation and allowing creation, then you're going you're gonna to constantly do that. And you're going to constantly evolve and just be open to, you know, evolving yourself, you know, just be, I, I guess, just keeping an open mind and keep an, keep an open focus all the time. That's what I, you know, that's what I try to do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Thank you so right. much. And thank you, everyone. Can we give a clap? Harissa, can I add one, one, like, I want to add one point to it, my aha moment, and then I'll end it. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> my aha moment was when I started getting DMs that kind of draw you, like, just like your French girls, and that's it. I knew it's for me. <laughs> thank you. <Sure. laughs> Thanks, Emmanuel. <laughs> what a great, what a great note to end on. We love that for you, Emmanuel. Honestly, one day I just want to see you driving a Cadillac with the rooftop off and two girls on your side. Like, <laughs> I want that for you. <laughs> Um, thank you again to all our amazing panelists. You are all incredible, talented, wonderful spectacular fantastic people doing amazing things in your communities and in the industries I bless you all um yeah Derek you did a great job in picking these people so good job to you too I'm throwing back to you Derek hey guys thank you so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed it why don't you leave a like comment and don't forget to subscribe